from the classic Klein blog. I'm out here with Credit Irene. Listen, I'm fresh from the uh, hot tub. You know, these curls are just doing whatever they want. We got the red, white, and blue behind us. Listen, I know it's a crazy week. I'm at an 18 room, 18 bathroom beach house in North Carolina on the water. But, you know, we bring the show to you. That the is people. funny. Okay. So, listen, I uh, met Irene via the internet. Like, I meet most of the people I talk to via the internet, but this is a special one. She's in Cleveland and Cleveland has cousin Nita. And so finally I went to go visit Cleveland. So then we got the cousin Nita action. So it was like, boom, 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 boom. Right. So if you can, right. <laughs> what's up everybody, everybody, when you come in, you know how we do, you drop that city in state. So Irene can see where some of y'all are coming from, you know, what you guys are about. And listen, if you guys are looking for that 850 credit score, you looking for all the credit conversation. It is here tonight. Let us know if you can hear us well. Put a one in the comments. Make sure we're all listening and can hear us well. If not, we need to know. It helps the show, baby. All right. So there's oh, you are. seven people here already. Y'all need to be hitting that like button. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of these off. And then I'm going to let Credit Irene start the show, man. So what's up, Houston? What's up, Raleigh? Okay. Hey, y'all. Hey, ladies. Thank you, Sparkle. Hey, how you doing? Again. All right, we got VA in here, Raleigh, Oakland, Charlotte. Uh, let me put my glasses on, stop playing. No, we got somebody <laughs> in here. Hey. New Jersey. Okay, Tulsa, Oklahoma, New York City, San Antonio. Already got that 827. All right, David Murray, let me co sign with you, baby. Sparkle Sims, Los Angeles, California. All right, we got Culver, uh, Calvary, Canada. I actually went to um, Jasper and Banff, Canada. It was awesome earlier this summer. What's up, Birmingham, Alabama? We've got Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut. Don't mind the children in the back down. They're getting in the hot tub. We've got <laughs> California. There's two hot tubs, one for adults, one for kids. All right, don't come over here. Don't come over here, what I tell you. All right, uh, we've got Fort Worth, East Nash, Knoxville, Tennessee. Thank y'all, listen, supporting the show, making it vibe. Listen, it's already 100 people in here. Let's get it on in here. 504 East Nash. What do we got the 504 area code or credit score? Which one is it? Atlanta, San Antonio, Jackson, Mississippi, and Detroit. So look, Credit Irene, give the people a little bit about you. Give the people a little bit, like introduce yourself. So I'm, unfortunately, I'm not in uh, North Carolina with the jacuzzi tubs and everything that Erica got going, got going on. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, in my two bedroom, two bath law. Um, and in the middle of downtown, she's in a pit house, y'all. <laughs> but I'm here to give y'all just really to answer a bunch of credit questions, um, give you guys an update of what's really going on with the credit repair industry. Um, I've seen a lot of people just spewing like really crazy stuff that is not correct, not accurate. So I just want to get on here, give y'all the 411, answer some questions y'all got, and then go from there. What is this? Oh, so first thing I want to talk about. Um, one of the biggest questions, like, or like one of the most often questions or most often asked questions that I get is, is credit repair legal? Okay. Yes, credit repair is legal. Credit repair, the credit repair industry is governed by federal and state laws. Um, one of the big things that's going on right now. So if you are a resident of the state of Georgia, you cannot perform paid credit repair services. So if you know anybody who is a resident of Georgia and they're, oh, let me fix your credit. Like you can pay me. I can do this. They are operating an illegal business. Um, earlier this year, I don't know if you guys are familiar with FES, but it's like this huge. Um, wait, wait, wait. You start dropping the bombs. Hold on. Wait a minute. You just, you just bopping bombs. Give it us a second. We've been on for four minutes. Hold on, girl. That's like the. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, I'm going to get you. Iceberg. Okay. I'm sorry. I see y'all in there. South Carolina. Yay, featuring Credit Irene. Yes, 785. Okay, I hope that's the credit score. Uh, I saw you about to say stop playing and put them glasses on. Y'all, don't do me like that. <laughs> Baltimore, Fort Worth, Fort Knox, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, Houston, Texas, Indiana. What's up, I Barbara? I see you. What's up, Colorado, Princess Lanceville? We got Louisville, Kentucky in the building. We got 504 is New Orleans. Excuse me, I'm corrected. Thank you. Julio, DFW, Compton, New NYC. Dignity Human Rights and a Daily Life channel. That's a great channel. You go ahead and pop her on the screen. Decoder, Georgia. Decatur, Georgia, excuse me. Your thoughts on Dave Ramsey? Hold on. We're going to let Creator Irene hit that. Hold on, Miss. A lot of people here from Georgia. 
Hey, y'all. FES, they tend to work with Keller Williams locally here. Josh Dandridge, that's, we're going to hit that. That's important. Can you guys see Irene? Is she fuzzy on your screen? Just let me know so I can make sure. But it's all good either way. We're going to put this great information out. Because I'm, I told her to close all her browsers. She be playing with me, y'all. Um, okay, then we good. FES has sales agents, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Okay. Oh, man, there's a ton of y'all in here. We got Sunny Val, California, Richmond, Virginia, Louisville, Las Vegas. All right. So Frax in the first start off. Now, you said, you dropped a bomb on us. You said that credit repair, you can't do credit repair in the state of Georgia. No. Of now, you know the, everybody in Atlanta just went, Err! Stop the record. Yeah. So here's the thing. There, this is a trend that I've been seeing. People think, oh, well, because so and so is doing it, or oh, I know a lot of people doing this, then it's legal. I know a lot of people selling dope. Like I know a <laughs> lot of people doing all types of shit. That stuff. I'm sorry. A lot of people just doing stuff um, that they shouldn't be doing. That does not mean that it's legal. Like you got all these people running around here with these CPN numbers. What what seems right about you using a social security number to try to obtain credit that's not your social security number? Like yeah. nothing about that seems legal. We did a whole show called yeah, Criminal Yeah, I don't care criminal how you number. dress it up. I don't care if the dude got the super fancy suit on. Like, no, it's, it's not legal. Georgia has the most black owned businesses in America. Yeah, they should, because there's a lot of black people that live in the state of Georgia. Well, it's but actually, according to okay, first of all, Cal, I don't want to rain on your parade. Actually, actually, the state of Mississippi is number one. Georgia is, uh, I think the number two is New York. Number three is Texas. Number four is Georgia. I know, Irene, it blows your mind, right? Keep focus, Irene, on the screen. Carl says, Irene raised my husband's credit score 180 days, 180 points in 30 days. Thank you, Carl. Carl. <laughs> Listen, Hannah Financial Shave was plugged, go ahead. Um, but yeah, so like there's there's nothing legal about that. So with the state of Georgia, like the attorney general outlawed credit repair probably in I think in like the early 2000s. And the main reason why they don't want people doing credit repair in Georgia, period, is because that was the peak of like a super big surge in identity theft fraud. Mm -hmm. So when people were doing credit repair back in the 90s and early 2000s, what they were doing was filing fake identity theft claims with the FTC and using that to white people's credit reports. Mm -hmm. That's what they were doing. So Georgia was like, we not dealing with it. We not having nobody in Georgia doing legal credit repair. So the attorney general, like every now and then you'll see a couple of articles, but I've seen three different cases this year so far where the attorney general in the state of Georgia is coming after people's necks. Um, FES, which is like a huge network marketing financial services that offer credit repair. They got fined like $2 million in July. Um, there was recently one of y'all favorite little YouTubers who was doing credit repair and some other stuff. Um, he just got fined six, six figures for doing credit repair in the state of Georgia. Like, listen, listen, not don't be afraid. He's my favorite, but you can say the name. I didn't say so it. So if y'all oh, listen, if y'all follow, and, and I love Darius because his Love Darius. His food, we love Darius. Yeah, this is great. But he well, he's and, a, and Darius Georgia. straight up. I repeatedly yeah. tell he is an amazing cook. He is an amazing salesman. He does millions of dollars in cookbooks. But hashtag uh, asterisk, yeah. whatever you call it, asterisk. Yeah, asterisk. You doing illegal credit repair in the state of Georgia? Um. So he was recently fined, and I mean like recently, like within the past 30 days. And this is all public knowledge. So if y'all want to Google like attorney Irene, general. Irene doesn't come with BS. This is yeah, actually attorney public general, knowledge. Georgia, credit repair, it'll show you credit repair is illegal in the state of, um, of Georgia, but they're not playing with people. So it's a, it's a lot of resources out here for y'all to get your credit repaired um, for free. I'm in Ohio, so like I can take Clients wherever the hell I want to take, but just uh -huh, as a, you that right, yes, saw listen, that. Just as a, as a of question, I don't even take clients from Georgia no more. Like I had three people sign up today, and they were all Georgia residents. And and you had to let them go, huh? Yep. Listen, do you think Equifax influenced that decision in his credit repair? No, not because at all. Because they're in Georgia. I mean, listen, I'll say this is a not a conspiracy theory, but like. When you have lobbyists in a state, it's possible. It's, Possibly. It's possible. We're going to say it. 
just like when you're in Texas and every time you try to get credit, Experian pull they pull Experian every time, and Experian's right here in the state of Texas. I, somewhat, somewhat, somewhat. So I would say so. So Darius Cooks, unfortunately, his 701 above 701 uh, got hit. He had to pay like $150,000 plus fine. You guys can totally, again, I, I'm going to drop her links. What's the links again I'm supposed to be putting in here, Hannah Financial? Oh, um, so I got a link to my free ebook. Uh, I think it's like 15 ways that collection agencies violate your consumer rights. Ooh. So, yeah, that's something else I'm going to talk about. A lot email, of it to me, email it to me and I'll put it in the email chat and the moderators will keep dropping it. I'll send it to you right now. What about 100% finance? Well, listen, I love, I love him as well. Juan Pablo does amazing work, but if you've noticed over the years, he switched it to uh, do it yourself credit repair, as you've noticed mm -hmm. a lot of people have switched to do it yourself credit repair. So, I mean, say what you will about it. Um, you know, I don't have to fight these issues, but I'm not going to be sending the, the government to nobody's door. If she just told you that credit repair is illegal in the state of Georgia, if you're a Georgia resident, so either two things are happening. He's not a Georgia resident or his credit repair is legal unless he's a nonprofit. So again, yeah. like, I mean, we're not calling anybody out here. We're just telling the facts. That's all. Right. And the IRS is no longer issuing nonprofit statuses for credit repair companies in Georgia. So let's, let's just clear it up there. Okay. Like so. let's just, we put that out here. There's 202 people here. We made it very clear. All right. <laughs> um, if that answers your question, Rita. Oh, see, well, I don't know, Lady B. I don't know what he knows. I don't know if he was he was unaware. Uh, sometimes that happens to people. They're unaware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, because you see so many people in Georgia, especially, you know, I yeah. was talking about people in their fancy suits. You see all these people with their fancy suits on doing Johnny something suit? in Georgia. And you just automatically assume like, oh, this is legit. Like the the downfall of social media is that perception is reality for a lot of people. Ooh, so when girl, they see people, say that again, preach. Listen, perception is reality for a lot of people. Yeah. So when they see people looking a certain type of way or like posting certain stuff, they just automatically assume like, oh, this is a legit business. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not. I mean, and I guess, and here's the thing too. I think people think, well, that person's getting away with it, so I'm going to get that away with it, and you know, you know, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So again... Like, I actually have somebody arguing me up and down about CPN. She's like, well, I know so many people that's doing it, and I know so many people who are in jail for Listen, using we, it. So girl, we did a whole two-hour show showing news report after news report. Like, one black lady, she did like 100 CPNs. She got Mercedes. She got a big old house. She got a big old everything. Just... This girl, I know her husband just went to jail. Right over the jail. For selling CPNs. And I was and like, a lot of times, let's just be very clear. CPNs are a real thing, right? But a lot mm -hmm. of times when people try to tell me, I ask them, first question I ask them, where did you get your CPN? Did a lawyer issue it to you? Did you go to right. court? Are you showing me that your parents stole your identity? Because let me be very, very, very clear. If your parents, which I've heard this story many times over the past years, I've worked with credit repair people. Um, parents were kept using people's social because they knew it. Or they were on drugs and they had problems. And the Social Security Department will issue you. Help, when you go down there, they will issue you a brand new number. So mm -hmm. if you tell me, I say, where'd you get your number from? Well, does that matter? It does matter. It well, no, does matter. Nobody's name is attached to this number. So you just made up a number. Like, do you don't think ICE is out here arresting people making up numbers? Y you know, so again, I, I, I love y'all. <laughs> but I literally get one, one or two emails a day when it comes to credit. Well, Erica... Uh, blah blah blah, you know, and I'm like, boo boo, I love you, but I'm it, it's in, incorrect, right? It's incorrect. So, again, dairy white. Oh my god, <laughs> I guess yeah, that's what they're sure. trying to do. They wait until they get a, a, a cease and desist. Look, AM1, AM1 just downloaded the book. There you go. Now, don't log off the show real quick, you know. Hey, stay at 222 people, we got more to come, but yeah, the book's out there. What is the CPN? Please clarify for them what CPN, what is, the CPN? is. So a CPN um, is basically called a credit profile number. It is a social security number. Um, sometimes people sell like sell social security numbers from like kids, old people, dead people, um, people that got mostly dead children, mostly dead children. 
Yeah, mostly dead um, drum. People got real fancy with it and have been like actually creating social security numbers. But the only social security number you have is the one that you're issued. Like, and like Erica said, unless you went through some crazy like identity theft, anything, the social security administration is not re administering you a social security number. Yeah. If you can prove and you can do a credit, like literally I had three people that I, that I actually worked with who had to go file police reports, went there and the, and it literally just got issued. It wasn't even a bit, it was like, they went to the thing, they filed the reports. Social security department said, Oh, this is the third time it's happened to you. Here's a new number. Mm -hmm. So, so when somebody say, well, I got it, where'd you get it from? And they never answer that part of the question or they tell me some crazy ghetto story. Well, like it ain't attached to nobody. Well, what's that got to do with it? You putting a fake number down with a fake address mm -hmm. and you think that sounds legit. This is an integrity issue. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. it's an and what a lot of people are doing now, um, and this is something that I found out, CPN equals criminal prisoner number. I like that. I'm starting using We talk about that on the show all the time, girl. We talk about that all the time. So what people do is they'll use a CPN, like a CPN number. They'll use their home address, their name, all of that. So the FTC is currently working with the credit bureaus. So the credit bureaus, they don't, they don't issue scores. They don't tell you if you have to pay a debt or not. All they do is house records. Like data is gold. Mm -hmm. That's all they do. All they do is house data. That's it. So the FTC is currently working on being able to cross reference like so basically if i had a cpn and i had like my regular credit profile if i have a cpn that has personal information in there that's closely like closely related to the data that's in my profile that's gonna flag them now i'm telling y'all like they're coming after people neck because y'all want to do crazy <laughs> stuff listen 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 I, I i really stepped away from credit repair and partnering with people on credit repair and sold my business earlier this April. Well, I started really February. I sold it over a year ago, honestly. We've been working this process out for a long time. But the fact remains is people will have a dumpster fire for their life. Didn't raise their income, but got their income tax check and enough money. Like, okay, why am I scoring 700 30 days later? Like, you guys. Whoo. And then you hear, you hear so many people like, oh, credit repair don't work. Da, da, da. A lot of times the reason why people don't get favorable. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. real quick, hold on. Yes, we know it's credit privacy number. We're just making fun of it. We're just making criminal fun of it. Number like, it. Again, criminal prison number, unless you got it from the social security office or you're a snitch and the feds gave you a new number or you're a celebrity who've had actual, De Robert De Niro had to have multiple times of his credit being stolen because there's a lot of Robert mm -hmm. De Niro's in New York, Italian name. You know, please don't, please don't do that. Again, here, um, not love. This is a victim of identity theft. Someone used her social security number while she was on disability. Someone in Vietnam was selling that info and finally arrested. They got 13 years. Boom. Again, y'all buying these numbers, trying to argue with me about why well, I bought this number. You know, it ain't attached to nobody. Okay, cool. Probably attached to a dead person. All right, cool. Whatever. If, I'm, if, we're, if we're giving you good information, just drop a one in the comments. I just want to make sure. That we're all on the same page. Yeah, we're on track. We're all on the same page. We're on the same page. Just drop a one if we all on the same page. If not, we, we might have to backtrack. Now, what made you get into credit repair? Credit repair. Whew. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 2014, my credit was shot with an I instead of an O because I'm trying not to. <laughs> Thank to you. Say, Do it at the same time. I'm like, I'm trying to get black, Yeah, but my credit was shot. I had like, a little over thirty thousand dollars worth of debt. My credit scores. I think my middle score was like a four ten. I paid off. My grandpa died in August two thousand fourteen, so he left oh. me eighty thousand dollars. What do we do when we want to try to fix our credit? Wow. We want to pay stuff off, right? So wow. I paid off thirty thousand dollars worth of debt October two thousand fourteen, and my credit score went up twelve points. So I was looking for help. I had heard about credit repair and. I always been like a smart cookie, you know. Yeah, I'm a smart cookie. Extra, a couple extra chocolate chips in my in my cookie. That's um, right. I was looking for somebody to help me with credit, and everybody that I I knew that was doing credit repair, they either just didn't seem legit, or when I asked them, like, well, when I have questions, who do I talk to? Oh, you won't have questions. I just spent thirty thousand dollars in thirty days. Oh God, for a twelve point increase. I'm going to have all the questions in the world. So. 
Um, I just figured I figured out on my own. So between 2014 and 2017, before my company was officially launched, I read like two, a little over 200 books on credit score and consumer law. Um, wait, 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 stop, stop. Did y'all hear that? 200. 200 books. See, people will come in here and be like, well, I read a book, two books, three no. books. Well, how many books do I need to read? Erica? I say 20, just, just like off the top. She just told you. 200. 200 books. Articles, books, um, reports, all types of stuff. So, and that was even before I officially launched. So when I did launch, it was like, oh, I thought I knew and it still was not enough. And I'll give a lot of people like, oh, Irene, like, can you teach me how to do, how to start a credit repair business? And no, why? It's a headache. A lot of people, they like, they see credit repairs like fast money and quick money, but they don't want to do the work necessary to get effective results, get good customer service. Like there have been people where I've had to refund because we couldn't get you any deletions, but we still communicated with you like the way that you should be handled as a client. Like we still gave you credit education, things of that nature. People, especially with the internet, they just want quick, like, oh, teach me how to do this. And then that's going to be that. Like I was able to scale my business to six figures in less than two, four years. And I'm still paying top dollar to train with the best of the best. Like my mentor worked for Equifax for 25 years. Like, so um, people don't, they don't want to put in that work. And I don't have the mental capacity to build your business and do the work for you. Yeah. Like I struggle enough trying to make sure that I put all the work into my business that I'm supposed to. So that's why I don't teach um, repair business startup anymore because it's, it's just a headache. And people Listen, want you to. Girl, I, can't, I started I, it and I was like, to this day, it's a great course. I still get testimonials on it. Like I'm using all the testimonials right. we have in the batch right now. But I'm telling you, it, you the person you have to become, like Glenda Cameron just gave me a shout on this channel the other day talking about three, four, five years Erica's been doing this. And I'm like, see, people don't see that part. They don't see mm -hmm. where three, four years you're studying, you're reading, you're reading, you're reading, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're improving who you are. They don't see that part. So, And they don't want to do that. And credit repair is not one of those industries where it's just, oh, let me start this business and do this. Like that's, that's not how it works. And then that's why it's so much, I feel like screw me with the credit repair company because you have so many like people, oh, I, I do credit repair, I do this, I do that. And it's like, you couldn't tell me what FICO scores is used for the mortgage industry. Like, girl, and then when I ask people and they be using Credit Karma, and I'm like, you're not even going to pay $29 a month. Now, this is the thing. I get it. Some of y'all like, Erica, I can't afford it. I can't afford anything. I literally pay from three different credit repair services. Not credit repair, but credit monitoring services. And they'd mm -hmm. be like, why are you doing that? I'm like, well, first of all, I done made some good bread, okay? And somebody probably going to try to steal my identity, which has happened not once, but twice in the state of Texas. They that got the old Visa card. Yeah, them assholes. They was they were oh scooping language. They were getting getting having the best life, right? Um, I think if we hit three cuss words, that's when they get the flag. But anyway, <laughs> but um, but like people won't even pay to monitor their stuff, and they be want to go get mm -hmm. cars and want to go get a house. Like if you can't even pay twenty nine dollars to monitor your stuff a month, you need to go work on the income. There's something wrong with your budget and your income. And a lot of times it don't even come in, honestly, just be people priorities. Like, oh my God, you mean I got to pay for credit repair? You pay to get your hair done, you pay to get your nails done. Those are priorities to you. Like getting your credit repair should be a priority to you. And then I see people like, oh, you can do it on your own. Do you know the consumer laws? Can you read all 45 parts in an account? How this many parts? Say it again. 45. Say it again. 45. 45. 45. Yeah. Like... Yeah. To even know what to dispute, and people think, "Oh, well, like if it's bad, it's, it's it shouldn't be on there. I need to dispute it." And it's like, no, that's that's not what credit repair is. Credit repair is removing inaccurately reporting, unverifiable, and outdated information from your credit reports. That's it. Yeah, I mean, David Murray is right. Like everybody I see that be on these credit repair groups, showing all their scores. Then you ask them what they doing, what they score. They get all mad with you because really all they want to do is show you they got this score when really mm -hmm. all they got is a brand new Honda and a thin credit file. Okay, like, boo, what you doing with the 700? Do you know right. what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing with anything that? Over, anything over 750 is, 
is prime. Like you don't get the same with a 750 as you would with an 800. Anything over that is honestly just bragging rights. The only reason I used to post my credit score, because I mean, you know, it, it took me a while to get to where I was at. Yeah. But um, if I if I felt like I need to like flex on somebody I know just doing credit repair with crap credit, then I go ahead and be like, hey, hey, look at this 820 FICO. But um, other than that, mm -mm. listen, A and one beauty is way more important than credit. The way these people be out in these streets, they act like it do. They Listen. act like them liposuction is more important than them nails and them hair, but we know better than that out here in these mm -hmm. streets, okay? Andre had to call you Midwest credit legend. Hey, now Andre. Listen. So now, question is, a couple people ask, how high can you get your credit score? Mm -hmm. Is 850 the number? 850 is the number. 850 is the number, okay? Now listen. What are some horror stories you have for us? Let's let us have them. Oh, now, you put your questions about credit in. Put your questions about credit in. There's 270 people in here. Y'all better be hitting that like now. It's 282. Ooh. It just hopped up like that. Come on in, y'all. Listen, who got a question about credit? Throw it in there while she's telling us the horror stories. Go ahead. Okay, so I got one. I don't take. I no longer take clients if I know you personally. Like I have live customer mm -hmm. service. There are several ways to you communicate with us. Uh -huh. Texting my phone at six twenty three a.m. is not one of them. Mm. So I don't, mm. I don't take family or friends no more. And if I do, I let them know I'm blocking you until you are, you are no longer a client because you will not hit my mobile device for anything. Ooh, you know, financial related. Like mm. I got too many people on payroll that is ready to assist you and answer Ooh. any questions that you have for you to be on my phone at six o'clock in the morning. Um. My, I think it was my first, like, oh, my God, I don't want to do credit repair no more. I had a client. We got her. It was like she had, like, a bunch of medical, like, old medical accounts or collection accounts. 17 accounts removed in 30 days. I specifically told her when I did her credit audit, I said, ma'am, you don't have any positive open accounts at all. I'm like, you need to get some positive credit on here because once we start removing these negative accounts, you're not going to have a credit score. So mm -hmm. she, you know, doing what she want to do. We got all, all the accounts removed. She went to the car dealership to buy a car and they told her that she didn't have a credit score. When I tell you, I have never been cussed out like that a day in my life. And I worked in retail for 13 years. I worked at Save a Lot for 13 years. So Ohio is the biggest Save a Lot division. And I was like in the hood of the hood. For 13 years and I have never in my life got cussed out the way that she cussed me out. Wow. Because people don't want to follow directions. They think, oh, well, if I just get the stuff deleted, my credit will be popping. And it's no, you you even when you sign up for credit repair, credit repair is a team sport. If you are not willing to put on your uniform and your knee pads and do the work on your end, don't sign up for credit repair. And that's for anybody. Because see what they don't understand is like. You didn't get here overnight. You're not leaving this spot overnight. Mm -hmm. But nobody wants to hear that part. Just like when it comes to be starting businesses. When I start telling people they need to spend money for Facebook ads, Google ads, constantly be training. They what do you me mean that. I got to invest in my business? What? Yeah. No, nah, I just want to pay it back. You know, I mean, again, I can't. Somebody asked earlier. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to leave, skip your question. What are your thoughts on Dave Ramsey? Go ahead and hit that one. Um... I think it's easy for rich people to tell broke people or like people who are not as wealthy as them to not use credit. Mm -hmm. um, I also think, I know, especially like in the black community, you, you hear cash is king. Like you heard it growing up your whole life. But when you got people who, who are really wealthy, like, and I use Beyonce and Jay-Z as an example, they live in a $90 million house in Malibu, right? Could they afford to just cash out for that $90 million house? Yes. Did they? No. They used their credit. They put a $30 million down payment down and used their credit to finance the rest. If the people who got real money are using their credit to fund their lifestyles and to grow their empires, why are we regular Joe Schmo middle class people not taking our credit seriously to do what we want to do in life? Right, 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 right. Well, here's even even to the next level. I've had people be like, oh, I make 200K a year and my credit is not good and this and that. And I'm like, listen, if you want to do some quick, fast, ridiculous, 
you know, knock some things off your score and then buy some trade lines. It's going to pop up for like 30 days, if that, 15 mm-hmm. sometimes, and fall back down. And then that 15 to 30 days, they're trying to hear them get you funding because they know it's going to fall down again. So, I mean, a lot of times I'm like, it's it's not just one thing or two things. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's your life. It's the way your life is set up. Yep. Again, every yeah. time I see that question, would you want a hundred thousand dollars or eight hundred credit score? I about fall over and throw up girl, every time. I'd be like, why are we still having this conversation? Like these two, these two things are not synonymous, and <laughs> they they're not. And people are like scared of debt, like because they only make it. Listen, seventy five million Americans are making thirty thousand dollars a year. Then you have another tier of people making that. I think it's like one million black men make a hundred thousand a year. No, no, one million black men make seventy thousand a year, and then like six hundred thousand black men make over a hundred thousand a year. So you're talking about small amounts of people making a lot of money, but then you don't have to make millions of dollars to have good credit. You don't have to make millions of dollars to live a great life or invest your money. But people be reckless out here. So. And again, let me be very clear on this show. We have a lot of white, Hispanic, and Latino and Asian guests that buy stuff, that invest in stuff. But just for the sake of conversation, I do use uh, black just because of the people watching the channel. Okay? So look, it is what it is. Now, Shumi said, what do you think about credit freezing if your credit is fine, but you want to starve off uh, identity theft? Um, if If you know that you're not applying for nothing no time soon, do it. But I think you just monitoring what you got going on in your credit report is fine. One of the things that I've been seeing lately is, oh, build, build your, make your kids have good credit by adding as authorized users to your credit reports. I mean, to your, uh, to your credit cards. Here's my thing. Mm-hmm. Most credit card companies will not let you add those kids before they're 16. Or and I was triggered because I saw somebody like, I added my kid as an authorized user when they was three. Are you going to monitor their credit reports from them being three years old until the time they're 18? No. So why are you, why? Why are you adding them as authorized users? And they won't even start to actually generate scores, start generating scores until they're, until they're 16, 17. So why are you adding them when you're three? I mean, when they're three. Well, even like I've, I told you on this channel, um, I've talked about my friends who uh, moms are mil- Korean, married to military husbands. And we were in college at East Carolina University. Everybody, can you see my shirt? Oh, I don't got it on. I had an East Carolina shirt on earlier. <laughs> I took it off when I got a hot tub. If you don't back up, go upstairs and have a meeting and bring me back a piece of chicken. All right. So listen, when we, we were at East Carolina, we're in our dorm room. And one of the girls pulled out an American Express that had 100,000 lemon on it. She called her mom because she's freaking out. She's like, Oh my God, something came in the mail and I didn't sign up for this. I didn't do anything, mom. And she's like, take that card, cut it up. I'm coming up to your dorm. If you touch it, you use it. I'm gonna bust you up. Her mom was Korean, but and her dad was black, but he, he she messed it up. She sent the card actually to her daughter, but she added her as authorized user. So when, and her mom, all she had was a little flea market shop that people right. made fun of on the weekends out there at the flea market shop. But mom's sitting there on $100,000 American Express. You know what no, I'm saying? Like- my um my grandpa, as a matter of fact, he's been an American Express member since like 1976. Um, he was a business owner here in Cleveland, and oh, here we go. Look at this old ass Amex. Look at my grandpa. I'm um, glad it's blood blurry for they be running off trying to. Oh, girl, he's so they, they, they can go ahead and try to do what they want with that card. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> Um, Listen, I just you know why it. she wait, wait. Y'all know why she fuzzy? Cause Skynet's a damn hater. Okay. Oh, I have three, three, three cuss word limit. Skynet is always on some mess. But don't worry, this is great information, and anybody watching this knows is good, and it looks pretty good from your cell phone. It's just on the desktop. It's a little fuzzy. It's more fuzzy. So, okay, That's next funny. question. Dave Ramsey will tell you credit scores don't matter. This is where we diverge. I love high net worth, a high credit score, just in case. Play it both ways. Darren White said, all right, Darren White with the, I think I know who that is. What are your guidelines for handling business credit wisely? So let's talk about business credit. Um, So we have business credit cards and then we have actual business credit that's completely separate from the personal credit. Listen, tell them. Yeah. And when I say that, so I think the big crave with business credit now is because people think, Oh, well, since my personal credit is crap, let me build my business credit. 
But then when you get to building your business credit, that takes money. You have to actually make transactions with these vendors that are going to report your payment history. And then people's like, well, why, why I got to do that? We don't got to deal with personal credit because personal credit and business credit are two completely different things. If you want to get business credit cards, they're going to use your personal credit. So if you Okay, listen. Listen. Now they watch this show. They watch this show with me and we've been back and forth. Now listen. I, and they're going to be like, Erica, but you said, listen, I said they're going to use PG when you have a brand new business. Nobody knows who you are. And you're coming in there asking for $50,000 with no yep. kind of anything. You just got a fresh got website, a, a fresh 1-800 number. Like, go ahead. Tell them. You got to have filed tax returns for three years in your business. And you have had, you have had to have done at least $2 million in business since you started in order for you to get any credit cards. Visa, MasterCard, or Amex that are not personally guaranteed. Okay, y'all. Because I say it, and I'm just, you know, Erica, you you just flexing on us at your 18-room beach house. You're lying. I told y'all. Chase, Chase Sapphire, Chase, you name it, Chase Preferred, Amex, mm -hmm. they have been shutting people down, and they have been asking for PGs and 90 mm -hmm. days worth of bank statements. Yep. Unless you have made $2 million or $3 million. And people will come on the internet every day and tell you, no, uh-uh. You, you, uh -uh, you can have... You can, you can get it without your personal. Erica, business credit is separate from your personal. And I'm telling you, yes, eventually it is when you have yeah. your, your other items. Look, nope. <laughs> they show a link. Listen, I'm, I'm not a because, Go ahead. The, um, That's actually, it's, it's law. It's in a Frank Dodd Act. So when, Okay, Frank Dodd, y'all. Yeah. Patriot the, Act. Tell them about the Patriot Act, girl. Yeah, when we were in the recession, you know, back in the day when Obama saved the economy and all that great stuff, a lot of the a lot of the hit that the banks took was from businesses. Default on credit cards, default on loans. And they like, we need to be able to hold somebody else accountable. So that's why you're not getting no business credit cards without no personal guarantee unless you 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 killing it in business. And if you're doing three million dollars in business, you probably ain't like checking for no business credit cards right now. Listen, you going straight for unsecured lines of credit. Mm -hmm. Is this helpful for anybody? Just drop a two in the comments. If it's helpful, we'll keep it moving. It's 37 minutes. I got to respect Irene's time. If this is helpful for y'all, you better put a two in the comments so I know to keep going and keep her on the show, y'all. You know people don't be wanting to be on the show all day. They ain't got time like that. She living her best life downtown. I went to a car dealer. I told them only run it to their dealer finance. They ran into 12 banks after I told them not to. So here's the thing about car dealerships. Car dealerships very seldomly have like in-house financing. Seldom. Yeah. So unless you you go to like Mercedes, like Mercedes Financial, um, you go to like Chevy, they use GMAC. When you give them the like the permission to run your credit, they're, they're not picking and choosing like who to run your credit through. So when they run it through that initial, yeah, when they run it through that initial person, which is their preferred lender. So like if you go to the Mercedes dealership, they ran my credit through Mercedes Financial. And since yep. my credit score was high enough to get approved through them with tier one credit, they didn't have to shop me around to nobody else. Right. You get shopped around to those additional dealers when their primary lender can't approve you. And just because you tell them like, oh, just run it through this one bank, they're not going to do that. They want to get you in a car and get you approved. Yeah, with they need to close it. Yeah, they want to get you approved with that 20% APR. <laughs> and that 22, I've seen 22% lately. Listen, and put you in that 2002 Chevy Malibu. Like, that's what they want to do. So I see this question often about pricing of credit repair. Let me make it very clear. Mm -hmm. I was in a group where they were charging $2,500. And mm -hmm. again, like I tell people, if you see somebody charging $300, $150, $400, they're trying to focus on a lower demographic, lower mm -hmm. economic demographic. That's just all there is to it. You would not, if you were a basketball player for the San Antonio Spurs, you're not trusting Ricky Bobby over there with your credit for $300. You're going to pay nope. two grand, five grand, 10 grand because your identity is important, who you are is important your score yep. you can't have your information out there like that is important so what's a reasonable price any price can be i mean there's no such thing as a reasonable price it depends on who you are but you mm -hmm. can say something different i mean you may you have a whole nother go ahead 
Go ahead. So here's the thing. Um, I see people doing like a 2,500 to do credit repair. And usually those are credit suites. So they're doing the, I, they still doing the FTC, uh, fake identity theft stuff to wipe y'all credit clean. If you guys are looking for credit repair services and you and you're not coming to Hannah Financial, shameless plug again, um, one nobody can charge you a flat upfront rate, like a flat upfront fee for credit repair. So I can't be like, Erica, you want me to you want me to fix your credit? It's gonna be twenty five hundred dollars one time, and I'm gonna get it together. Listen, used to do it. I ain't gonna lie. I did when I started out. That when was I started before, out, I'm like, I ain't got time for your foolishness. Yeah, that was before <laughs> I knew, like, knew the law. And it was, yeah, before I knew the and law. And that's when I started. I was like, ooh, wait, I got to change. Um, but go ahead. So, yeah, like, nobody can charge you a large flat upfront, like, flat fee. Um, I know when I was looking for a credit repair, I just needed somebody to talk to. So, like, with Hannah Financial, I've got full time customer service staff. No, I'm not on the phone with the yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not on the phone service anymore, but I train them very well. I pay them very well, and they service my clients tremendously. Like, if you Google handandfinancial.com, I think we've got, like, a 4.9 rating on Google. Okay. So someone said, hey, I paid off my car a year early. Any idea why my credit only increased two points? Yeah, There's so a, pan So many variables, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, one, usually when you pay off um, installment debt early, that's that's not going to give you no points. Like, none. Usually, and I'll see people like, oh, my God, I paid my car off early and my score dropped. The only time your score would drop from you paying off your car early is you if got it's nothing else out there. that and if it's your Vantage score. Your FICO score will not drop for you paying off installment loans early. It sounds like you have, are you looking at Credit Karma? Not judging you. I yeah, get it. Are. If you go look at myfico.com, you go look at creditchecktotal.com and people are like, oh, that costs money every month. Erica. Yeah, but you're going to get, well, myfico.com is what most people in the bigger companies use. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing else other than that. Um, you're going to get FICO 8, FICO 9, FICO 2, mm -hmm. FICO 3. The old FICOs they use for credit cards, the, the new ones they use for cars. I mean, again, Shane said, can you still do credit repair in Texas. Yeah, Georgia's the only state that credit repair is illegal. Because y'all wore it out, and I want to name some names who wore it out, but I'm going to leave it alone because y'all love coming on here, but Credit Suite said yeah, they can say whatever they want. They're the reason why right. it's that way. So again, I Barbara said, why she cuss you out after you tell her up front? She petty. Because she people don't listen. They, don't, they hear what they want to hear, really, though. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they do. There you go. Is wage garnishment a good reason for late payments? And will credit bureaus accept this reason to take things off of a credit report? No. This the guy said deletions versus paying out. Oh, sorry. Finish just finish what you were going to say. So credit repair, the only reason credit repair is a thing is because the, the credit bureaus, the house's data, they have to have 100% accurate information on on you. So what they, the information they report on you, the data they report on you has to be 100% accurately report accurately has to be 100% verifiable and cannot be outdated. So if you were late, like you you were really late because your wages was being garnished, that's not a that's not an inaccuracy. That's not that's not like a, a goof with the the whoever you had the line of credit with. Like you were actually late, but it was because your wages was being garnished. In that situation, I would write like a goodwill letter to multiple times. Yeah, multiple times. Um if it's if it's like Capital One, find the email for the CEO of Capital One. Email them multiple times. If you have never been late with that account, you have a higher chance of them removing it. If you have been late a couple of times, they probably won't. But they don't have to remove accurate information. Yeah. Uh, deletions first paying it off. So one thing to know about credit repair, removing anything from your credit report does not. I'm on my remove, show, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Does I'm not remove sure. your obligation to the debt. No, you're good. So. A lot of people be like, oh, well, I got all this wiped off from my credit report. You still owe it. They can still go to court, get a judgment, get your garnished wage. I mean, your wage is garnished. Um, so if it's within the statute of limitations and it varies state to state, you can Google it, statute of limitations and my state. If it's within the statute of limitations, I would definitely recommend you doing what you need to do to get that debt settled. But deleting items and settling debt are like two completely different things. This person said, what are your recommendations on student loan debt? Do you recommend accelerating it if it's your only debt or invest in income producing assets? What's your answer on that? 
income producing assets. Yeah, yeah. I think people are so hard pressed on credit. One, it does affect your job. When you apply for jobs, it does affect you greatly. Mm -hmm. But also because they want to live beyond their means, right? There's someone who's mm -hmm. only going to make 30, 40K. And Erica, I saw that if you get all these points, you know, if you do velocity, like wow, last schemes, basically, if you do velocity yep. credit, if you pay all your bills on your credit card and you get all these points and at the end of the month, you pay that credit card off, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, but again, that only goes so far. Like once you're, once you're they trying so hard period and you then max out the points, then what? I know. Well, do you going to travel the world and you still have the low income? I don't know. Right. So what McCoy is said, thank you for the $5 super chat. Thank you for supporting this channel. People that super chat are supporting this channel. That's what makes this pop. Okay. Cause you Support know, Skynet us. don't love me. Okay. She said, what's your opinion on Lexington law? So Lexington law is the biggest credit repair company in the world. I mean, in the, in the country, mm -hmm. um, they're actually owned by the same company that owns TransUnion, which is why credit repair is not going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you. Um, like I am a member of Nax Naxo, which is the lobbyist organization for credit repair. Naxo, but, everybody. Naxo. Yeah, N-A-C-S-O. But the the eggs that Lexington Law got in that basket are a lot um, more than the eggs that I have. So um, I don't really have an opinion on them. I've never used their services. I heard their crap, and I know that they don't dispute uh, student loans. They don't have a reason to be great. They're the biggest. Yeah, they, don't, the they don't have a reason to be great. They run, honestly. Run commercials. they run commercials at night. They run commercials on the radio. They got billboards. Like Walmart. Walmart is the worst store in the world. Like you would not. I catch don't me. go in Walmart. You would not catch me dead in a Walmart. But I haven't gone to Walmart in three years on purpose. I have not been to Walmart since I almost stepped on a bloody pad doing uh, price comparisons for my job in 2015. Like, no, I don't want no parts. I okay. think other good strategies to boost credit limits on personal credit to obtain 50K or more in business. A lot of times it's really just letting your credit age out. Like everybody want to have these 800 credit scores and your credit profile age is only like two years old. So, and I, I've never, you got personal credit cards um, with 50K or more? Who, me? Oh, for business credit. You getting business credit cards? Yeah, I got one with, uh, oh, y'all might try to get Yeah, I got a six, business credit card with yeah, 65,000. Yeah, I got 70K. I got one for 70K. I got the maxed out at Navy Fed. If you try to get my ID, yeah, identity, listen, we we are monitoring it like the hawk right. over here. I ain't worried. I ain't scared. Um, also, the channel knows I make fun of this one co customer that I helped fix their credit. They got a $70,000, the max, biggest you could ever get at Navy Federal Business Credit Card. And then him and his wife went on a vacation for two weeks in Italy. Like in Europe, like they went to Spain and Italy and came back like it was no problem. Like, okay, I'm ready to do A, B, and C. And I'm like, I I'm on my show. Way. Please stop being disrespectful. <laughs> God, Lee, these Negroes, I done told them 27 times I'm on a show. Come come out here. Hold on, wait. We got somebody about to get that. I almost had to threaten him with the people's elbow. Okay, so we done. That All right. Funny. Listen, we got an 18 room house, 18 bathrooms, but yet they will come outside to be like, what you doing out here? What you doing? What you doing? What you looking at? All right, Katie, how can I remove a past 30, 60 day late for my credit report? Woo. Listen. Is that a collection account or is that a late account? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is that a late? Katie, Katie give us some more information. All right. Uh, there's that. Okay. I hear you done the finance guy. Credit is another form of leverage. You only use it after you have a solid plan of execution. I completely agree. Agreed. Andre Hatchett, it's in your mind. You got to have discipline to get ahead. You do. This person, true business queen said, do you save money or pay off credit cards? Um, so I probably only have like $20,000 in my rainy day fund. Ooh. Yeah. More. More. Yeah. 20K. But, yeah. but that, I mean, that's more than the nation though <laughs> like the sure, that's more than I had when i was at save a lot making thirty nine thousand dollars a year yeah. um i would pay off i would make sure i got like some savings but i would pay off debt credit card debt for sure okay so then this one's perfect 
poor money management plus credit equals bad combination doesn't know doesn't matter how much you make this is true this is very true when i when i launched my company i was like kind of sad because i didn't have a lot of um local clients like i didn't have a lot of clients in ohio i didn't i didn't have no clients in cleveland i ended Mm -hmm. up meeting this wealth manager didn't even know that was a job but he basically just tell rich people how to spend any money um I had met a wealth manager and he referred my he referred to me my first 10 clients in Cleveland and they were all old white dudes making six and seven figures a year. They couldn't maneuver the way that they wanted to with their money because they had shit credit. Yeah, I believe it. Question. When you dispute a single item, does that start the report from that particular company over? No. All right. Um. Okay, so even if it allows you, Jeremy, to add your kids at age 13, are you monitoring their report for the next six years, what, five years till they become 18 years old to make sure they're not being stolen? When we have in the nation the highest identity theft going around, especially with young kids Mm -hmm. ever. That's my only problem with that. Yes, I told them to give me some chicken. (laughs) Y'all here making fun of me. I don't care. Um... You got multiple credit scores. This is true. Three. Okay. So it's it's different FICO scores, and then it's different FICO models with each score. I'm finding another question. Boom. Thank you. Nathaniel Howard, 80% of business credit approval is determined by your personal credit file. Yep. That is true. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is, again, I tell people 80% of banks ain't even checking for Duns and Bradstreet. They're using Experian partners and Equifax partners. And when I tell people that, they be like, oh, you're kind of trying to hear that. Especially if you are getting most of these loans that banks are giving you are SBA backed. You have to have good business credit and good personal credit. So if you walk into Chase, if you walk into Huntington, if you walk into uh, Fifth Third, um, you walk into Wells Fargo. If your personal credit is crap, they're not giving you a business loan. If you have excellent score, they will roll you with a no secure financing and wait for the dealer preferred approval. That's possible. Um, he said he paid two thousand for credit pair. Don't even know if it worked. You got wow. got. Bro. I was told not to pay medical debt collections and that they can be removed from your credit report. Does any of that make sense? Yes, they can definitely be removed from your credit report. But what do you do when you don't pay those collection agencies and now you got a judgment? Because I'm pretty sure you didn't go to court when you got summoned. And now they're garnishing your wages for those medical collections. Just because something that's on your report does not remove your obligations to the debt. I know this is a stretch, but do you think there's ramifications of the impeachment proceedings will affect credit regulators or algorithm long term? Uh, no. Honey, I have a feeling that lobbyists are working every day and night behind closed doors to make sure things keep rolling the way they roll. Mm-hmm. David Murray. If you lose your job and working at a lower paying job, should you contact the credit card company to make adjustments, even though you're making on time payments or just keep pushing to get back? I would call um, a lot of times before we fall on hard times. We see it coming like we see the quiet before the storm or yeah. like we we see it. Right. So when if you were to call. Say I, say I was in a space where I wanted to file bankruptcy, if I was to call American Express and be like, hey. I'm, I need to file bankruptcy or I'm looking to file bankruptcy, but I don't, I want to weigh my options. I want to see like if I can get maybe a lower interest rate or adjust my payment dates so I don't have to file the bankruptcy. They're going to work with you. Like they're going to work with you because no, no creditor wants their accounts to be included in bankruptcy. Wow. Why is it illegal in Georgia? Because the attorney general said so. So you gotta realize you have people come in the show late. So they're you know, oh, there's so they didn't turn people you. here. We've had so over seven hundred people the, coming in and out the show. So Georgia was the leading state for fake identity theft claims in the early two thousands. So the attorney general outlawed credit repair altogether in the state of Georgia. And they said they ain't got time for it. So no. we we brought that up because we were saying about people getting find and their businesses shut down unfortunately one of our favorites i talk about all the time here in a very positive light if anybody reports mm-hmm. me he's be talking about you every every other show I'm saying something we love darius. Positive about darius repeat right. here on instagram everywhere that he's an amazing businessman he's an amazing cook a youtube channel you name it all of it instagram but right. 
he did. We, you come as an example that the attorney yeah, general in exactly. Georgia is not playing with y'all. <laughs> Listen, you you get a high enough profile and enough people rolling on your Instagram buying credit repair. Yeah, they're gonna get you, baby. They just, you know, it is what it is. So, <clears throat> I've been a credit saint for six months, and my score has gone down twenty three points. I really don't see the benefit. Again, I mean, we don't live by our credit score. Do you know what I'm saying? We live by our investments. Does that and one of the things that people don't know about um, your credit score, so your credit scores are reflective of trended data. Mm -hmm. And that trended data is basically what's going on with all the consumers in the United States. So if you've ever like checked your credit report and your score dropped like 20 points and nothing has changed, like your credit utilization didn't change, your age might have even increased. A lot of times it's because of what's going on with other consumers in the United States. Gotcha. And we, okay. we don't know that. We don't know that. We it's do Christmas know. time. We, what we do know right now is that 90, uh, 90 million people are like, uh, no, no, 7 million people are 90 days late on their cars. We do know that. And an additional 38 million people are 90 days late on their credit card payments. So if that's going on in the nation, it may not be anything you're doing. It may just be Christmas time and people ain't paying their bills. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, Barber, thank you for the $20 super chat. Thank you, Erica, for what you do. No, thank you for supporting the Classy Climb blog. You know, you guys are supporting. Again, you guys just bought, he just bought my beer. Samuel Adams. Thank you so much. Um, they look at your credit when you apply for a security clearance. Again, this is, again, for people who are trying yes. to get in a security clearance job, they in the military. Yeah, you need to keep your credit clean. Yep. Um, read that. I'm gonna say you already know what I'm gonna say on that. No, exactly. Should I pay my mortgage with credit cards? No, please. What do you think about AU authorized users? They're not working as they used to, but she can tell you. Go ahead. Yeah. So the the newer um, FICO models, like FICO nine, is not laying authorized users as much as it used to. And you got to be very careful with authorized users because you buy in somebody else's credit history to do something like get a mortgage, especially an FHA backed mortgage or a USDA mortgage or a VA mortgage is mortgage fraud. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you are buying somebody else's credit history to inflate your credit score to get a federally insured debt. Okay, everybody you heard that. Okay. So Joshua, uh, this said this is all to capitalize on people's stupidity with financial aspect for sure. In the 1920s, um, the Rockefellers took, which I know Cleveland people love Rockefellers. The Rockefellers took uh, accounting out of school because they said they didn't need it. Now, what does that do? Accounting basically is mad, like what money you got coming in, what money you got coming out of your check. If mm -hmm. you don't know, again, Albert Einstein, if you don't understand, um, you know. <laughs> Listen, I was getting ready to say a quote and I just changed my mind because I hear somebody behind me. They about to get it. <laughs> they don't even know. They about to get the hammer up in here. Anyway, the point is, if you don't understand understand how uh, interest works, you're going you're gonna to be penalized by it. You have to understand, like, when I see people repeatedly tell me, Irene, the first thing I hear is, well, I had to do what I had to do. You had to do 29% interest on a credit card. You had you had two percent interest on a car. I had mm -hmm. to do what I had to do. I had somebody message me two days ago, and I usually, I honestly, I usually don't check my DMs on Instagram. If you want to sign up for my services, my website is standardfinancial.com. I'm not doing. I don't do free consultations. So if you want to schedule a credit clarity call, those will be back on my website after June second. I mean, not June, January second. But I'm on vacation the rest of this. The rest of this Listen, month. <laughs> January through March. Yeah, I'm girl. on vacation. Come but through. But I will have people DM me like. Irene, this girl did me the other day. I got two evictions. I got some medical collections. I owe two gas companies and the light. And I'm just like, this is not you falling on hard times. This is you being financially Repeatedly. irresponsible as hell. Repeatedly. You don't need credit repair. You need like a life overhaul for you to get your priorities together. And people are like, Erica, you don't understand things happen to people. Yes, this is true. Every day and night, things do happen to people. This is correct. Um, Ryan, we ain't gonna do that tonight. That's not the show we talking about. But I see you tried to slide it in there. All he right, tried. Uh, he tried it. Uh, it's more than that. Eighty percent of my clients are two hundred thousand earners. I feel you. I mean, we all need people. Do need to start understanding credit mix, real estate, credit card, install installment loans. Yes, this is true. 
Yeah, you guys, some of these questions are a little bit high, but go ahead. We'll go ahead. There you go. How do you get rid of a Chapter 7 bankruptcy that has been on your credit report for over six years? Sign up for HannahFinancial.com, and we'll find the error in it and dispute it. <laughs> there you go. All right. Ladies, thank you for my favorite topic. Thank you, CW, for the $2 super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, leave your children out of it, please. Your business handling, leave legacy for your children, not debt. Um, no. What I saw, Giant Lifestyle, what they end up doing is if her parents ever used her credit or social again, they would automatically be like flat. It would automatically, they were going to jail. They were going to jail. Not not thinking about it, they were going to jail. Which FICO is used for mortgages? Experian FICO 2, Equifax FICO 5, and TransUnion FICO 4. What services do you recommend to monitor both personal and business credit? I say nav.com, nav.com, but again, yeah. you know, some people are in my courses and they know I've already said that though. So. Yeah. Thank you, Chris Lee TV, for the $5 super chat. I appreciate all this info. Yes, we. Uh, thank you. Thank you for supporting the channel. Again, Super Chat, support the channel and support me bringing on cool guests. How what do we do? Protect their social security. A lot of, you know how many people lose or how many people actually carry their social security cards around with them? Oh, girl. And I used to like, as, adults, as adults, I'm, I'm 33. As adults, our, our information is everywhere. Like we didn't have accounts with this person, that person. We didn't sign up for this credit monitoring, that credit monitoring. Your children are at an advantage because their personal information is not nowhere online mm -hmm. right now. Majority of the time when kids' information gets stolen, it's because a parent done lost a birth certificate, social security card, my wallet got stolen. Stop carrying those documents. Like you should not be carrying your social security card or birth certificate in your wallet. Or you purse. should have a safe or something somewhere. 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 Listen, my friend lost her, her job. Company sold out and laid off. She went bankrupt. And in two years, she bought a house. That does happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember. There, I tell people all the time, there is life after bankruptcy. Like That's if you know I'm you are way over your head in debt, you don't need credit repair. You need to file bankruptcy. Well, here's the thing. I am very against bankruptcy. And, um, and people really? on the channel know why. And here's the thing. Uh, when you're watching and there's not a YouTuber, I'm not going to make fun of him, but he he making eleven thousand dollars a month as an engineer and him and his wife filed bankruptcy. Then they turn around and they stunt on the Internet hard. You making three thousand dollars or less a month filing bankruptcy. It's not the same. Yeah, no, I feel like bankruptcy is need based. If you are making eleven thousand dollars a month, you don't need to file bankruptcy. You oh, honey, they were so over the top that they sugar. found it. Sugar, honey, iced tea together. Yeah, but I think bankruptcy. Um, I think bankruptcy is a good option for people who need to file bankruptcy. Like you making dough and you just living beyond your means, you don't need to file bankruptcy. You need to scale back and get your get your stuff together. Yeah. So I mean, I, and I find that people are like, "Oh yeah, they told me I could file bankruptcy," yeah. but it even shows lawyers will show that they target those people three years later because nine times out of ten, they stuff is not together financially. They will be back in the same rut. If you file Chapter Thirteen. 93% of people that file chapter 13 end up filing chapter seven. Boom. 93. Listen, wait, everybody, I'm going to type that in the comment. I want to be, I want to post it. You say it again. 93 mm -hmm. percent of people who file chapter 13 bankruptcy end up filing chapter seven within five years. Now, why am I putting this up here, y'all? Because I say it and people are like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. where's the source? Where's the, but listen, I don't have to make this up, y'all. This is actually documented out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Leticia, thank you for the $2 super chat. Will Cap One business cards get me a business credit score? Yes. I hate Capital One. They're the worst, but go ahead. I don't recommend Capital One to anybody. Anybody. Because. Capital One credit cards show up on your personal credit. So like, yes, you need a personal guarantee. Like my Chase Inc. card, they Chase ran my credit to tell me if they was going to give me this credit card or not. But my Chase Inc. business credit card does not show up on my Stop. personal credit. Back up. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend uh, uh, Capital One business cards to anybody. Anybody. Uh, I mean, and it's useful when you get it, you get what you have to do. You have to do what you do. But that's the same right. people that tell me I had to do what I had to do. I'm like, all right, cool. 
You know, my but they, they they driving around with their hair and nails done, and they in the club Listen, every time. I want to tell stories, but see, my family behind me, I can't tell what I want to say. Now I've just seen people come and be like, "Oh, our family need this and that," and they they got nice cars, they got a nice house. It, they don't ever change that part. So yeah, um, Crystal House said I saw a lot of promotional inquiries on my report. I did not ask for that. Do that count towards credit repair? Credit score, no. Nah. Mm -mm. SBA loans are hard. This is true. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Nissan Finance doesn't let you go past 60 days late. I don't know where these folks getting these cars from 90 days late. They can't find them. They be they hiding them. They can't they find can't them. Get it. <laughs> That you know, if you call and be like, Oh, I'm gonna make a payment, and then they have you in this pending status, and then all of a sudden they can't find you in 90 days. Trust these people out here doing the most, okay? Um, uh, learn rule 72. Yes, this is true. What am I putting in the chat window? What do you need? Her oh, uh, my website, yeah, my social media handles. You guys can follow me on Instagram at credit, credit Irene, queen. credit, credit queen Irene. Uh, excuse me, credit. I'm queen. Smiling. Listen, I'm smiling real big in my profile picture like this. You can't miss okay. it. Tell her Erica since you came from the Classy Climb show. Yes. No Make more sure you guys free information. My free ebook <laughs> e is at the top of the chat, the link. Yeah. Okay. Make it's sure you download that. that. We're going to put it in the uh, description as well. Okay. Let's listen to this. I'm a high school math teacher on a military base. I find myself teaching more about finance and wealth building then algebra. There you go. Help the children. You got to. And you know what's crazy? I heard that they took like home ec out of, uh, out of some schools. They took it out of a lot of schools. Home ec, all this stuff. And they're trying to put it back in. Yeah, they're trying Louis, to sell Louis, Louis said she should write a book about the different FICO scores and models. I would buy it. Louis, she has a free ebook that we're giving out in the chat. You can get it today. Download it today. So, courtesy of Erica, I'm actually starting my own YouTube channel. And because I'm, if y'all, if y'all ain't in Erica's YouTube course, y'all need to be in it. Um, I'm starting my own YouTube channel because people really don't read. Like they should, Honey. they should. We should read, but people don't read. And for me, it's easier for me to verbally say and like get my points across. So. I'm about to be in these YouTube streets. Listen, when, when she gets her court, her credit Thanks channel credit. up, we are going to go over there and storm her walls and all subscribe to that channel. Aren't we, you guys? Put a three in the comments if you would love to see Irene's credit channel. I'm talking about nothing but credit. Put a three in the comments so we know that she got some subscribers, future subscribers here. Uh, thank you, M. Jim, for the $5 super chat. If you have great credit, most people have poor credit where you live. Are you potentially affected by this? No, because when they do um, the trended data for like the consumers, it's it's nationally. I, I would I would say this. I, I have seen I went to an event. It was a credit event here in like Austin, Texas, which I'm in North Carolina, but no, it was Austin, Texas. And there were older white guys standing up mad. They're like, I done clean my people's credit and they having bad mm -hmm. results. And and people in the room even said, well, what zip code do they live in? Now, I have friends who are a Chinese husband, Egyptian wife. They moved to the east side of town before it got regentrified. And they were like, we ain't getting approved for nothing. And we got high credit scores. I do yep. think your zip code when you apply has something to do with your credit. Now, I can't prove that. I can't pinpoint it down. I don't want to say zip code. I want to say it's more so like Region? general area. Yeah. Yep. I know. When, so they moved, when they moved to the other part of town, when their house was built, their new house was built, all of a sudden it's like... Like they mailbox yeah. can't stay full. You and know what I'm saying? Red, redlining, like, yeah. or do we do that? It's real. Like it's very real. Very mm -hmm. real. Like I went to um, where did I go? I went to Dollar Bank to get a home equity loan because the house my the house that I was living in my primary residence is like I own it free and clear, like no mortgage. Mm -hmm. And they gave me hell because of the location of my house, which is which is an opportunity zone now. Mm -hmm. And my property value has went up 30 percent over last year. So but yeah, like that's why I think a lot of it is not because of credit it's, it's because of stuff like redlining and them just not mm -hmm. wanting to mm -hmm. lend people in specific areas. Yep. So, I mean, we just set it out there. We put it out there. So y'all. 
you know, agree or disagree. Thank you, Alton Butler, for the $2 super chat, <laughs> three-ish. Um, how does having a negative balance on your credit card affect your credit scores? On your credit card? I don't know. Your Repeat that question. Yeah, yeah only, card, that only card that I have that will let me overpay is my Amex Platinum. Got you. But that, that wouldn't have a negative. Uh, that wouldn't have any effect on your credit, honestly. That's why my new zip will be in Zionsville, Indiana. Where is that at? Is there a rich place? <laughs> Let me know. I don't know. I'm not from up north. Any tips if a bill collector is trying to garnish you? I got to go to court next month to prove my exemptions. Go to court? For sure. Um, and that's how they really win. People don't go to court. People are like, oh, I ain't got time. I can't get off work or whatever. The vast majority of judgments and wage garnishments are issued because the don't show up. people don't show up for court. And nine times out of ten, the creditor is not going to show up for court either. And if you if you feel like you are in an undue, I mean, like a financial hardship, you can request to get that to vacate that judgment. Like it's paperwork at the courthouse that you can fill out to get that to get yourself removed from the judgment to stop your wages from being garnished. Okay, y'all, listen. It's been, oh, where can I get the link to ebook? Hold on, hold on. I posted it earlier. Let me see if I post it again. Boom, there's her book, y'all. I posted it like a few times. Irene book. But I'm a, I am going to let her go because it is getting colder out here. The water is starting to dry on my body. I got to get back in that hot tub. First, I got to get some chicken. And then I'm going to get in this hot tub because you see that kid didn't bring me no chicken. I want y'all to know for the record. The kid came out being nosy, didn't bring me no chicken. Um, there's the ebook. Mortgage lenders will add points to interest rates for the hood, no matter what your score is, unfortunately. Yeah, we've had some lawsuits. Uh, and it with, sounds like that's yeah. actually illegal. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's illegal. They've been doing it though. They be they be get when they get caught. And they, you know, it's 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 sad, but again, you guys gotta be, you know, actively paying attention to what you're applying to. So everybody, listen, we're gonna have Credit Irene's book in the description. Erica, bring Irene back. She's cute. Listen, you know, she do what she do, y'all. She do what she do. Why couldn't I have Miss Erica and Miss Irene in my life growing up? Listen, we was out here. People didn't want to hear us. <laughs> we here now, though. That's how many of you Miss Irene, four. We, hey, we on seven. We about to get to ten, though. Let's do this. I'm working um, all right, you guys, listen. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, I appreciate all of you guys for coming and supporting the show. We got 385 people here. Look, Miss Irene, you bought them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Uh, make sure you guys hit the like button when you close this out and share this video. Share this it. Video people. Help people out. Listen, you know people are out here struggling with their credit. They're struggling to get mortgages. They're struggling to get their uh, car. All of it, right? A credit card isn't going to save you. And a plan you have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, download Irene's book. It's going to be in the description. Thank you, Irene, for coming on. Spending your hour and 12 minutes with us in the fam. Listen, Skynet didn't stop us. It don't stop nothing. I don't care if the screen fuzzy. We're going to keep this show rocking. We're going to make Listen. this a podcast at some point, okay? All right. We thank you for $2 super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. So, thank y'all all for supporting the channel tonight. Irene, give them, tell them where they can find you. Everything else, where they can find you. Listen, Instagram, Credit Queen, Irene, Facebook, Irene Day. Um, my business, hannahfinancial.com. It's with H, H A N N A H, financial.com. Um, if you guys need need your credit fix legally, uh, what else? What else? What else? I'll be launching Hannah Financial University soon. Yep. DIY credit repair options, bunch of financial literacy courses in there. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching the show. This is Erica, Thank you for being here. Yes, you were fun. Listen, the rest of the week, y'all, we're going to have tech jobs, resumes. We're going to have all kinds of stuff popping on this week. Money Madu, I overslept yesterday and missed Money Madu show. So sorry to him. We will bring him back out. <laughs> but look, your girl was tired. She's been traveling, traveling. But That's thank you, Irene. Funny. I will see you in Cleveland again. I'm going to have to come up there and beat uh, Cousin Nita's leg. So while I'm there, I'll beat your legs too. So, all Listen, right, you guys. <laughs> I'm on vacation. So I ain't back working until January 6th. Okay, like, I heard working, that. But I ain't going to be like, Tired, tired. Tired. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All right, you guys. This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Climb blog. This is your girl, Credit Irene. Please go find her at Credit Queen Irene on Instagram and let her know. Thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate it. We liked it. Get her DM. But you know she's going to send you straight to uh, straight to 
uh, you can buy a console. <laughs> That's what you're probably going to yeah. so, go. <laughs> But anyway, love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And you guys know we are on the countdown. December 31st, we are out of here. Three-month vacation. Later, you guys. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Thank you.